Jedi Geographers, hello. Uh, video number three, water cycle. Inquiry question one. Today we're going to be looking at 5.2c, which is still looking at this at a scale, uh, a drainage basin scale. So we're thinking of you know river basin systems uh, within the global water cycle. Uh, we're thinking about how human activity, the things people do. Uh, industry, agriculture, land use changes, uh, what alter uh, drainage basin inputs, processes, and also outputs. All right. Uh, and well, what you're going to learn by this end of this lesson, hopefully, you're going to be able to name the processes affected by human activity. You're going to be able to name some activities that affect these processes and then the most important bit when we think through geography you're going to try and link the two so how do the processes how are the processes affected by the human activity all right uh, and with this there are quite a wide range of case study examples you know if you get an assessed question in the exam you're gonna to have to support uh, whatever judgments you make. Now there's two ways of doing that. One way is by using a range of examples and comparing those examples uh, to some extent and the other way is through numbers, data and evidence. So in today's lesson I've kind of gone for a bit of a mixed bag really. There's lots of little examples uh, and then at the end I want you to go away and research a more detailed case study example in the Amazon. Uh, right, first keyword I'm going to kick off with is land use because obviously one human activity or human action, put simply speaking, is to change how the land is used. So there's a whole range of different ways people can do that. One is through different types of agriculture. We can use the land in different ways, whether it's pastoral uh, farmland where livestock, cattle and animals are kind of grazing or we can change that agricultural land use to arable farmland where we actually grow crops. All right, so I've probably defined three keywords just in that little sentence, yeah? So land use, how the land, how people use the land, all right? Very vague, general kind of term. Arable is basically crop growing, Pastoral is basically livestock and cattle, yep, uh, on fields. Right, let's do it then, here we go. Right, this graphic should be familiar. It is a uh, cross-section of a drainage basin with inputs, processes, and outputs shown. Uh, what I want you to do, and what I'm going to get you to do throughout this video at certain points is to pause it and just think through, brainstorm, jot down on a scrap piece of paper uh, the geography basically. So first thing I want you to do is think of what human actions might affect some of these processes. All right. Uh, we mentioned changing land use, so that might kick you off. We're, we're, we're way into brainstorm. Once you've got maybe two, three, four different human activities, I want you to then think through and imagine how that would affect uh, any of these processes on this graphic. All right. Once you've thought through that, just think, well, how does it affect it? Does it increase it? Does it decrease it? Does it make it faster? Does it make it slower? Uh, and think of like, kind of like how it how it affects it. And I am going to kind of get on my little soapbox for, for a minute or two uh, and just give you an insight into kind of how I how I think of geography when, when I were an A-level student. Uh, and because I was a confident geographer, I did have to remember, you know, keywords, case study data, examples. Uh, but because I practiced that much, I could actually remember the keywords and if I got an exam question, 
I could think of the geography on the fly, yeah? It's very difficult to remember understanding. Uh, you remember knowledge, you remember facts, you remember figures. It's what you do with that knowledge, facts and figures, in the exam to show your understanding, to make judgments uh, clearly and coherently what makes the difference between your high grades and uh, yeah, your probably not so successful performances in exams. So, you know, a lot of my students say to me, oh, there's so much to remember in geography, there's so much to remember. Well, yeah, there's quite a lot of knowledge, facts and figures to remember, but what is probably more valuable is the practice and how confident you can get in using that knowledge, all right? Uh, and me or your teacher telling you, trying to tell you the understanding doesn't work all right you've got to you've got to practice showing your understanding so yeah three different human activities and then link to any or several processes if possible does it reduce it increase it speed it up slow it down all right go right then hopefully you've got some ideas and uh, you will we'll have a look at these in, in a minute uh, and don't worry if you've kind of got a human activity and not link and linked it to other processes than the one shown on the screen at the minute. That's fine. I'm sure it'll be right. Just check it with your teacher. Check it with me, and I'll have a look at it in lesson. Uh, the main processes, the, the the ones that are most affected by humans, uh, are these six. All right. Evaporation and transpiration, interception by vegetation infiltration into the soil uh, groundwater stores and flows uh, surface runoff amount and speed and channel flow levels and kind of speed I guess All right. you might want to make a note of these folks just jot them down subheading as well okay then the first way that humans can alter or change the land use within a drainage basin is and the, the probably the most important one to remember for the exam is through urbanization urban sprawl and drainage systems in cities i'm just going to spend a minute or two to define these keywords urbanization is the percentage or proportion of people that live in urban areas compared to rural areas and that as a trend globally, uh, especially in the developing world, in your in your NICs and your LEDCs, is increasing. Increasingly, more and more people are moving to cities and to urban environments to find work uh, and for a whole range of reasons. I think quality of life will be better in cities. All right. So urbanisation is increasing globally, especially in the developing world. Urban sprawl kind of latches onto the back of urbanization because as more and more people are moving into cities naturally there's more pressure on these cities to actually expand build more houses build more transport infrastructure uh, and cities are getting bigger in terms of population size and density but also in terms of the land and the, the urban area that's getting larger uh, Drainage systems are, are quite important to this next section because as cities get bigger, uh, there's more tarmac, more concrete, if you like, more impermeable surfaces and drains, which obviously affects these processes you see on the left-hand side. Now, what I want you to do is study the graphic. There's a few clues on that graphic, but just visualize a forested area on the left, a natural kind of area, uh, if it was left with no human in, uh, influence, and then visualize that forest that's been cleared or deforested, and we've got tarmac, we've got buildings, we've got drains, we've got larger cities in the on the right hand side. All right, and what I want you to do is think through how each one of these processes is affected all right how does urbanization and urban sprawl and drains affect each one of these processes don't worry if you look at one and you get stuck you know just 
you know, if you get three or four, fantastic, yeah? Does it increase? Does it decrease? Does it speed it up? Does it slow, slow it down, all right? I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes just to make some notes. It's very important that you kind of do this and not just wait for me to tell you the answers because your teacher will not be there in the exam. You've got to think through. You remember the keywords on the left. You remember the factor and then that's all I need. I put the rest together on the fly in the exam, all right, and show me understanding. Uh, the more you practice that, the easier it gets, folks, I promise you. Go. Right then, let's see how we did. Here we go. So, uh, obviously, first difference you see, more tarmac and impermeable surfaces on the right. So, what does that affect? Well, the first thing that tarmac and uh, urban areas affect is it reduces infiltration. All right. So, on the left, you've probably got thick soils. Uh, water can infiltrate into the soil and percolate into the ground. On the right, in an urban urban setting, that doesn't happen nowhere near as much. Therefore, groundwater stores decrease because they're not being replenished. Uh, water doesn't infiltrate into soils and rocks, so therefore, groundwater stores and flows decrease. However, surface runoff increases because tarmac is impermeable water can't infiltrate therefore if it can't infiltrate into the ground where is it going to go use a bit of logic it runs off on the surface into the drains the effect of that is channel flow increases uh, in speed as well so water that travels over the surface travels faster than water that travels in the ground so uh, if you've got more water on the surface it reaches the river channel quicker uh, which can increase the risk of flooding obviously the less trees you've got because they've been deforested in an urban setting you've got less interception by vegetation uh, and less transpiration by vegetation and trees because there's not much of it all right but the main explanation for this will come in these uh, keywords which are affected the most all right basically urbanization accelerates and speeds up the flows and transfers all right that's the key point and the reason for that is the four keywords that I've just circled yep you need to be able to name the factor and then use these keywords to explain how these uh, these flows and transfers are affected right the second way we can change land use is through different agricultural fact uh, practices all right so you know arable farming is basically growing crops pastoral farming is livestock grazing animals hill sheep farming cows cattle sheep whatever uh, and the th the practice of channel irrigation i will uh, describe to you what that is it is an example it's very popular on the banks of the river nile in egypt and this photo is actually actually from there all right so i'll just enlarge it a touch what channel irrigation is is a series of mud earth or clay banks that, that the local people have, have made themselves and a series of uh, smaller channels this and then what they do is they either hand pump or some some basic type of pumping uh, practice pumps water from these channels onto the fields and they basically flood the fields all right so just visualize that massive fields flooded using river water right then for each one of these uh, I want you to think of how infiltration rates might be affected uh, how the channel flow of the river might be affected or if at all remember it might not be affected that much so in geography 
if something kind of you think mm, I don't know whether it's increasing or decreasing it kind of stays the same you know be confident that might be the answer yeah uh, and then evaporation and outputs out of the drainage basin so yeah at least try and get one that you're confident with for each for, for each practice and try and think why as well all right go right okay then we'll take arable farming first uh, and the clues in the picture because when you're growing crops uh, you might be growing different types of crops different times of the year you need to kind of churn up if you like or plow plow the fields uh, and this actually increases infiltration rates because what you're doing is you're aerating the soil you're turning it over so water can infiltrate and soak into it a lot easier all right uh, and that's the main process that's affected with arable farming pastoral farming with livestock this is a tricky one to get this if you've done if you've got this then well done uh, obviously you've got a lot of sheep cattle and they tr they constantly graze and eat the grass uh, and so they keep the grass uh, very short this and uh, what well, the trampling as they're kind of grazing compacts the soil so it means that infiltration rates are a lot lower because the water struggles to infiltrate into the soil also because the grass is kept quite quite short if you like uh, yeah transpiration transpiration rates are low as well all right now if we think this through if infiltration rates are much lower then that means if it does rain intensely that water has got to go somewhere so it tends to stay on the surface so overland flow uh, and surface runoff is increased uh, and therefore channel flow would respond and increase as well so what you find in places like the lake district for instance why is why are certain parts of the lake district flood kind of flood prone the prone to flooding well a couple of reasons uh, one is the input of rainfall in Cumbria very high to the relief and the slopes it runs off from the upland areas and mountains down into the river valleys very quickly but three is kind of a human factor which is the land use itself uh, yeah such as a lot of, a lot of uh, pastoral farming compacts the soil water can't infiltrate and soak into the ground so it stays on the surface the third one channel irrigation uh, the main two processes that are affected uh, channel flow and evaporation if you think of vast amounts of water being taken out of the river Nile to flood these fields well it's going to lower the channel flow because the water's not in the river channel but also if you think of the climate in places like Egypt very uh, hot very warm very arid as well so evaporation rates are a lot higher and when you flood fields you actually increase the surface area so the losses and the outputs out of the drainage basin are, 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 are huge yeah it's a very unsustainable uh, way to irrigate crops all right because the outputs and the evaporation is very high so well done if you got that one folks right the the next one I want you to think through is we're going to call river management and dams so a dam is simply where you wall wall off or block off the river uh, and it creates a reservoir behind it so just think through yeah think through how these processes would be affected all right go right then a bit like the last example uh, with channel irrigation if you increase the surface area uh, of water that's ex exposed to the sun's energy then evaporation is going to increase because the surface area is increased so when you create a lake behind that dam uh, you do a couple of things one is you increase the water store in the form of the reservoir uh, example for the hoover dam it's called Lake Mead 
and Lake Mead uh, stretches back at least I think 80 or 100 kilometers behind the Hoover Dam creates a large store large reservoir uh, evaporation rates increase upstream but if you think the river is in effect being prevented from flowing downstream it's been blocked off so channel flow downstream increases all right next one uh, next way that human activities can affect drainage basins processes is through over abstracting aquifers we can over abstract rivers as well over abstracting aquifers the word over abstraction simply means to take out more than what's naturally being replenished so if you were taking out and using more water from Lake Mead than what's actually flowing into Lake Mead then what you get is you get these tide marks around the edge where the, it's evidence that the, the, the levels of this lake are decreasing and that use is unsustainable all right usa has got a large challenge to fix more people are moving to big cities like las vegas they're becoming thirstier using more water uh, and they're using the store in lake mead to actually meet that demand uh, but it's not sustainable at the minute now if we apply that same kind of th theory if you like that same logic to underground water stores it's the same thing folks uh, what happens is the water table that previously was probably like this if we are abstracting more water out than what's replenishing and going in then the water table drops so you can see how this has dropped uh, and aquifers fail uh, because they're not being recharged all right and we're abstracting uh, more water than what is actually recharging it and if you think of residence times or aquifers it's even more significant because the residence times is really kind of long they take a long time to recharge they've took th hundreds tens hundreds thousands even millions of years to actually to actually recharge so the water table depth decreases it goes deeper if you like no yeah yeah be careful with your language so the depth increases sorry goes deeper yep and we call this the corner depression so you can see where we've put a, uh, a pump in it's actually gone deeper so it's like a cone all right groundwater stores decrease again unsustainable examples of where this happens in the world uh, northern china i've got a fact a bit of a fact and a figure here groundwater levels dropped by a meter per year between 1974 and 2010 so evidence to suggest that the Chinese have been abstracting water at a sustainable rate also on a, on a uh, slightly different but same same logic I guess in northern India and I think Pakistan as well uh, because they've got water supply problems domestic users so people in their villages actually access groundwater themselves uh, and dig wells that are illegal so the government uh, don't want people doing this but there's an estimate to be two million illegal wells uh, causing groundwater stores and aquifers to actually fail uh, and dry up all right number four is cloud seeding which uh, is a bit kind of high tech if there's any chemists amongst you then uh, ask your chemistry teacher what what this is all about uh, as geographers we don't need to get into the chemistry at a deep level uh, basically what happens is planes often airplanes oops yeah planes spray a chemical called silver iodide into the atmosphere right in the hope that this will create rain uh, the Chinese were pretty big on this and during the Beijing Olympics of 2008 northern China is very arid uh, 
as a, as a case study the south of china it's got a plentiful water supply but northern china where you find a lot of your major cities like beijing uh, are very arid so they tried to stimulate rainfall by uh, creating it artificially which sounds a bit weird and wonderful jury's still out on to kind of how successful it is uh, yeah its effectiveness is still debated and it serves as a condensation nuclei to try and condense water vapor and form rain okay folks so lots of kind of little uh, smaller but uh, you know wide range of case study examples there uh, what I want you to do in preparation for next lesson is have a do a bit of research uh, and you know get a case study example with a bit more kind of meat to the bones if you like uh, so good support in geography is a mixture of range of examples but also some of them have to have you know some evidence to to strengthen your arguments and support them so we've got the range i just want you to go away and research the uh, impacts of deforestation on the water cycle and on the drainage basin amazon drainage basin all right a uh, couple of articles to start you off from the guardian but please you know use the power of google or any other reputable search engine uh, you need to be thinking in terms of activity so what, what have people done some evidence to suggest how significant that activity is uh, and then the most important thing you're looking when you're reading these you're looking for links between the activity to the inputs the type of rainfall you're looking for the link between the activity and the flows and transfers within that basin and then uh, you're looking for the link between the activity and the outputs deforestation is a big one where uh, vast swathes of forest have been basically chopped down for a whole range of reasons cattle ranching timber production loads of different reasons i'm sure you'll stumble across a selection of them uh okay okay so yeah bring a kind of fact file to lesson as well and one other thing that i did forgot which i've got to mention because it's my favorite holiday destination ever is Las Vegas so the urbanization example uh, that you can use urban sprawl in action Las Vegas in 1984 uh, as a city geographically much smaller than in 2009 and as you fly into Las Vegas you see housing developments you see JCBs and diggers actually it's, it's getting bigger and bigger it's actually it's, it's yeah popular place lots of people are migrating to live in las vegas must be the lifestyle folks i don't know i don't know what they'd see uh, <laughs> go on holiday and you'll probably realize why people are moving there for work but also for leisure uh, another little photograph here yep very large getting bigger and bigger right now then so we stayed at the link hotel and that after a major downpour that was what we were faced with all right in the basement of the hotel it, it is below ground level because they've kind of dug the foundations uh lower and then you've got parking lots and and your valet parking is underneath uh and vegas you might be thinking well why on earth are we using vegas as an example for in effect kind of flooding if you like because it's in the middle of a desert which it is it's in the middle of the mojave desert which is very arid but every now and again vegas receives an intense burst of rainfall and when it comes it comes all right and you can see here uh, under our hotel there's these enlarged kind of drainage systems what are designed to take the water away as quickly as possible but they can't even cope with it and if we apply what we learned uh, previously why why is this happening well one thing there's more drains two 
more impermeable surfaces than tarmac. Three, less interception by uh, vegetation, if there was any there before, but definitely water's not been allowed to soak into into soils and make its way more slowly into local rivers. It It's kind of just running straight off the surface, straight over the surface, and into these drainage systems. All right, so... Yes, Vegas does flood, folks, believe it or not. Uh, Okie dokie. Further reading, then. Again, oh, I forgot to do my page numbers. Never mind. Uh, 10 and 11 in your student guide. 15 in your, what is it, iguana book? The dark blue book. Uh, and the other two I forgot. I will do it for next time. Terrible. Okie dokie. Thank you. Bye-bye.